Continuing the basic graduate year in algebra, abstract algebra 0.1.4 covers the integers modulo m. So if a and b are integers and m is a positive integer greater than or equal to 2, we write a is congruent to b mod m and say that A is congruent to B modulo M. If A minus B is divisible by M, congruence modulo M is an equivalence relation, and the resulting equivalence classes are called residue classes mod M. Residue classes can be added, subtracted, and multiplied consistently by choosing a representative from each class, performing the appropriate operation, and calculating the residue class of the result. The collection Z sub M of residue classes mod M forms a commutative ring under addition and multiplication. Z sub M is a field if and only if M is prime. The general definitions of ring, integral domain, and field will be given later in section 2.1. So remember that a is congruent to B modulo M if A minus B is divisible by M. Also remember that congruence M forms an equivalence relation and those equivalence classes are called residue classes. Z, Z sub M is the collection of residue classes mod M. And it's a commutative ring under addition and multiplication. And Z sub M is a field if and only if M is prime. Now, 0.1.5. 1. The integer A is relatively prime to M if and only if A is a unit mod M. That is, A has a multiplicative inverse mod M. So he's defining unit here as an object that has a multiplicative inverse. And so A being relatively prime to M is equivalent to A being a unit mod M. That is having a multiplicative inverse. Number two, if C divides AB and A and C are relatively prime, then C divides B. Okay, so if C divides a product and the one of the terms of the product is relatively prime to the divisor, then the other item is what gets divided. This is under 0.1.5. Three, if A and B are relatively prime to M, then AB is relatively prime to M. Four, if AX is congruent to AY mod M and A is relatively prime to M, then X is congruent to Y mod M. So AX congruent to AY mod M. If that a that's in front of the X and the Y are relatively prime to M, then you can kind of cross it off like a cancellation, and X is congruent to Y mod M. That's when A is relatively prime to M. All right, number five. If D equals the greatest common divisor of A and B, the greatest common divide GCD of A comma B, then a divided by D and B divided by D are relatively prime. Oh, in other words, you're pulling out the greatest common divisor for A and B 
then A and B will be relatively prime. Number six, if AX is congruent to AY mod M and D is the greatest common divisor of A and M, then X is congruent to Y mod M divided by D. Okay, so D is the greatest common divisor. Uh, if you have AX congruent to AY mod M, D a greatest common divisor of A and a greatest common divisor of M. If you pull that out, you'll get uh, another kind of cancellation, X congruent to Y mod M divided by D. All right, number seven, if A sub I divides B for I equals one through R, and A sub I and A sub J are relatively prime whenever I is different from J, then the product A1 times dot, dot, dot times A sub R divides B. So A sub I divides B for like A1, A2, A3, all those divide B. And all the AI and AJ are relatively prime with each other when I, I is different from J. Then one can conclude that the product of all the A's will also divide B. Okay, we'll do the Chinese remainder theorem in a different video.